Hi, Dr. Lyons here, of course. This video is going to present a perspective on the different engineering disciplines and the tool that we're going to use to uh, talk about what the different types of engineers do is this can. Well, any cannon, but this is just one in particular. I think cans are really, really cool. Uh, they are seriously engineered products. Um, most of the cost of a beverage is associated with the aluminum in the can. So uh, as the cans have uh, evolved, as their design has changed over the years, a lot of the work has been done to try to reduce the amount of aluminum that's in the can. Some of the, some of the r cool things I think about cans, first of all, start at the very top. Uh, there's this flat section at the top you all know about, and the fact that there is a scored groove right there that is just deep enough to open when I pull the tab, but doesn't pop loose when uh, the can is under pressure and just sitting around or maybe having other things piled on top of it, is very cool. I mean, somebody had to figure out exactly how deep that groove needed to be so that this very small lever arm could remove the tab, but not have that score so deep and that, that top so thin that the tab would just break by itself. I'm going to get a different can to keep talking that. Now that I've opened that up, I don't want to pour it all over the place about the top of the tab or can. So that's one cool, so that's one cool thing about the top of the can. I'd like you to, to look at the bottom of the can and notice that it is arched. There's an arch underneath the bottom of that can. And that's a very ancient uh, engineering discovery or invention. Um, the arch will support a lot of weight for the amount of material that's right there when something's pushing down on the arch. And uh, some of the older cans had flat bottoms. And they had to make the bottom of the can very, very thick so that when the can was pressurized, the bottom wouldn't bulge down. And by actually stretching the material and making an arch out of it on the bottom, we we're able to have a much thinner bottom to the can, reduces weight, reduces the aluminum that's required, and still supports the weight of the can um, without bulging down and next to the can doesn't bobble over. Now the question might be, why don't we have an arch at the top? Because actually what I've, what I've read is the amount of metal in this top disc is about the same amount of metal as in the entire rest of the can. So we put up a lot of money into the top of the can by the amount of aluminum that we're storing right there. But why don't we have an arch? Well, we don't have an arch because it would be uh, unpleasant to try to drink from a hole punched, you know, in the bottom of the can with that arch thing, you know, get all over you and everything like that. So for human factors engineering, we need a flat top so that the humans that use the can are delighted when they drink their cold beverage. Now, some of the earlier cans before this type of uh, model was... Uh, sort of created, had straight sides. And one of the things that's been an advancement is uh, some technology in the forming process that's been able to reduce the size of the top diameter. And therefore, we can reduce the diameter of this fat disc at the top and reduce the amount of aluminum in the can. So I think that's pretty cool. And that's kind of why it's, it's shaped like that. Um, let's see. So what else do I like about the can? Um, it's a perfect size for my hand. There's some human factors there. Uh, there's four parts that the can is made out of. Uh, there's the, the can body. There's the top disc. There's the pull tab. And then there is a rivet that holds the pull tab to the top. The, the way these things are manufactured will show in, uh, in just a few minutes the... Uh, at least all the way up to the point of filling the beverage. Basically, the whole bottom of the can is made in one assembly process, and the top of the can is made in another assembly process. And after the can is filled with the liquid, the top is put down and the rim is folded over to crimp the top and, and keep the whole thing intact. So I think it's a really cool engineering product. We see them all the time. A lot of times we don't think much about them. But a lot of thought has gone into these cans, and uh, I hope that uh, one day you may be able to invent an even better can. Now, in terms of uh, what type of engineers were involved in the design of the can, what do you think? 
the, 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 I would say the primary discipline of engineering that's involved in coming up with the structural features of the can is mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering deals with uh, how objects respond to forces and uh, temperature changes and also there's other aspects of mechanical engineering dealing, dealing with power generation and power usage. But the, uh, the, you know, the, the stress analysis on the can, how thick does the wall need to be so it doesn't explode when uh, it gets under pressure, uh, all that is something you'll learn about in mechanical engineering. Uh, but how did it get that way? Well, I'm going to uh, go to the computer and use a couple of pictures to show uh, a little bit of the history of the materials that go into the can. Uh, so I've made some PowerPoint slides to illustrate how the different types of engineers are involved in the development of the can as we use it today. And we already talked about mechanical engineers and what a great role they play in the design of the can. Th this is an illustration of the can that shows a side view and a top view and a bottom view, obviously. This, I want to just point out, this is a very typical way that a three-dimensional object is described in a two-dimensional drawing. You can pretty much get all the information you need from most objects with these three two-dimensional views, a side view, a top view, and bottom view. Uh, one thing else I want to just elaborate a little bit more on is the pull tab. And this is a really nice little lever arm right here. And it's actually a pretty powerful lever arm for its size. If we draw a line here up and down to illustrate how long the the lever is and we put the fulcrum at the rivet, we can see that the distance from the fulcrum to the top of the tab where you might pull your finger is much larger than the distance from the fulcrum to the point where the tab presses on the pop top of the can. And that's probably, just eyeballing that, that's probably a multiplier of about six times the force. So that really gives us a pretty good force to pop that little top in. One of the reasons why it's so hard to pop that top if the rivet fails, you know, and we're trying to push down on it without that big lever arm helping us. So that's another uh, great tool for the mechanical engineers use all the time, which is the lever. Uh, then my question to you is who else is involved in the development of the cam? Well, let's trace the aluminum. It's most of the aluminum uh, that's uh, used in the world today uh, comes from just a few places in the in the world, and there are major bauxite deposits in Australia. And bauxite is one of the primary sources of aluminum. It's a mineral aggregate. There's all kinds of different components in in here, and we've got to somehow get it out of the ground and turn it into aluminum, and then turn it into cans. The folks that are involved in the mining of the aluminum are mining engineers and environmental engineers. The process of mining the aluminum starts with some site preparation. Environmental engineers will be called in to do an environmental impact and provide some guidance on how that site can be cleared with minimizing the, the impact on the plants and animals and people and water and air and everything else around there. And the site is prepared. Uh, the next step is bauxite mining where it's dug up out of the ground and carried with some these really, really big trucks to a crushing mill. Crushing mill is a couple of big ro metal rollers where the uh, big chunks of bauxite are broken up into little chunks and transported on a conveyor to uh, maybe a train car or maybe more trucks and then uh, off to the next step in the process. After the amount of ore has been removed from the site that uh, you know is sort of economically useful or feasible, then uh, the site is rehabilitated and environmental engineers are again very key in helping uh, return the mining area to a state that's as close to its original as possible. Now the, the bauxite is uh, a rock, and to get the alumina out of the rock, we've got to go through several processes. One of the uh, first processes involves chemical engineering, where the compound alumina, which is aluminum oxide, is produced from the bauxite. Uh, this slide shows a step in the process called precipitation processing, where the, uh, the bauxite is digested in some caustic, uh, which is a very basic, uh, as opposed to acidic, uh, 
compound and through a precipitation process, which basically means stuff settles out, falls out, uh, we get a precipitate, which can then be heated up or calcinated, and that process is, results in a material called alumina. So the bauxite is turned into alumina, and that will imp- the alumina uh, is rich in aluminum. Uh, there's a whole bunch of waste residue that's removed, so we've got a, a higher concentration of the aluminum metal in the alumina than we did in the original bauxite. So a lot of times the uh, the alumina production occurs very close to the mining site to reduce cost of transportation. Ocean engineering deals with the design of very large uh, ocean-going vessels and other uh, naval structures. Uh, and civil engineering deals with uh, a number of areas, including the design of locks and canals and dev- dams and levees. So those ocean engineers and civil engineers are really important for us because we, uh, as, as a country, the United States, import a lot of alumina and we use our uh, local resources to convert it to aluminum. So if the ocean engineers and the civil engineers help us get our alumina to the United States. The, the folks that are looking at the entire transportation system from um, ships to trains to to uh, trucks are called transportation engineers. And the transportation engineers don't design the ship or the train. What they do is they design the transportation network and figure out how materials and people should flow from one place to the other as as efficiently as possible. In South Carolina, there is a plant that uh, refines alumina and turns it into aluminum uh, down near Charleston. So the stuff comes in on a ship in Charleston, gets loaded onto trains, and then uh, hauled up a couple miles inland to to Mount Holly. The the alumina gets turned into aluminum primarily through another chemical reaction that also that involves a lot of electricity. So it's, it's an electrochemical or electrolytic reduction process that would be designed by chemical engineers and also metallurgical engineers to some extent. The electrolytic processing of manufacturing the aluminum involves dissolving the alumina in a material called cryolite, uh, uh, inserting some uh, very large carbon anodes into the cryolite, and uh, applying a voltage between the, the, the anodes on the top and the cathodes on the bottom. And a electrochemical reaction occurs whereby the alumina um, decomposes into uh, aluminum and uh, the oxygen reacts with some stuff in the cryolite, I believe. And then the aluminum can be drained out of the bottom as it settles down. And that's kind of how the aluminum is produced. That would involve chemical engineers and metallurgical engineers. This slide shows liquid aluminum pouring out of a uh, a tap furnace where it might have been stored and into some molds that are called ingot molds. And and then after those molds move down the conveyor belt, the aluminum uh, solidifies as it cools. And we've got a bunch of ingots stacked up right here ready for the next step. So the process of uh, solidifying the liquid metal is called casting. And a process engineer would be a type of engineer who looks at the material handling processes and the equipment that would be used in each step of the process as we go from, say, liquid aluminum to solid aluminum to removal from the, the molds to material handling and stacking them up in the pallet. So the process engineer is dealing with the equipment design and maintenance and uh, improvement for the, uh, the process line. All of this requires vast amounts of electrical power. And so if it weren't for electrical engineers and nuclear engineers, we wouldn't be able to have uh, aluminum as cheaply as we do right now. In fact, it's only been since uh, the late 1800s that we've had enough power so that aluminum could be uh, cheap enough to produce in mass quantities. So, you know, there, there's a lot of nuclear power in South Carolina, and uh, we've got in this slide illustrating a nuclear containment building. That's uh, the nuclear reactor itself. That's going to be designed by nuclear engineers. And then there is a, an electrical generation system, and then there's the cooling tower over here on the right. So basically, we've got two loops of water. The nuclear reaction generates heat, 
And in uh, this particular reactor, with the water boils, it turns into steam. The steam comes through a turbine, turns the turbine blades, which turn the generator, which generate electricity, goes through transformers to transmission lines and um, to our aluminum manufacturing facility. The steam gets cooled by a cooled wa- cold water loop and turns back into uh, liquid water, which comes, uh, re- which gets recycled to the, the generator. Uh, You know, the cold water loop uh, has water coming from the cooling tower through the heat exchanger, removing heat from the steam and getting getting hot in the process, going back to the cooling tower. So there's a couple of separate loops there. So, yeah, thank you, electrical engineers and nuclear engineers, for your part in delivering these tasty beverages and aluminum cans to my house. Uh, The... Earlier slides showed solid ingots of aluminum, and those don't look much like cans. We've got to go through a process of breaking those big slabs down into and turning them into thin sheet. And an aluminum rolling mill would be the process for, for doing that. The sheets might, would be heated up. There would be pass-through rollers, which would reduce the thickness, and pass-through more rollers, which reduce the thickness, and then rolled up on a big coiler. The This bottom slide right here shows uh, a ingot after a one or two passes where it's still thick. And this slide over here at the right shows the thin sheet being rolled up onto a, a large spool. So mechanical engineers are involved in, in the design of the, the rolling mills. And for example, an illustration of uh, why mechanical engineers would be important is right here as in the upper right-hand corner. As the material is squashed by the rollers, the rollers tend to deflect away from the uh, workpiece. So you have to actually put a bevel on the rollers so that the amount of deflection I- is just offset by the amount of original camber or bevel on the roller so that you present a flat surface right there. So the mechanical engineer would be involved in figuring out what the exact shape of the roller should be so that when the forces are applied, the top surface in contact with the material is flat. So that's kind of cool. And Another area of engineering that's involved in the production of the can is industrial engineering, and the industrial engineers are going to look at a number of things, including the uh, workflow, the material handling, the economics of various processes, uh, ergonomics and human factors involved in the operating of the machinery and stuff like that. So they're pretty important, too. Um, what I want you to do next is to look at a, a YouTube video that somebody else produced uh, that takes the cans um, from the sheet mode, from the sheet of aluminum and t- into the final can state. And there's all kinds of engineers and computer scientists uh, involved in these steps. Particularly, I want you to try to identify the uh, areas where you see computer scientists might be involved. For example, one to keep an eye out for is all of the computer vision systems that are used to Uh, take pictures of uh, the cans as they fly by the machinery in terms of quality control. So yeah, that's my video and uh, I hope you enjoy your tasty beverages in your aluminum cans and are appreciative of all the engineers that work so hard to get them to you.